Moki UK's original article linked in the description started me down this rabbit hole, as it were. The goal of this dive was to make the encoder work well consistently. Two things that I noticed that were never addressed in this original dive were the voltage for the sensors relating to distance and the reflectivity of the gear even when sharpied. The first issue for this original design is the supply of voltage. But there are two opposing issues here. One of the IR emitter and the IC gate circuit used to detect the reflections. The most elegant way to alleviate these issues is to build a custom board to drop the voltages to the proper ranges for sensing over our truncated focal length. But that removes the ease of access to cheap IR modules, so that's not my solution. So what is the solution to the voltage problem? First, we need to know what voltage we need to hit. And that lies in the two components that operate in our limited housing space. Ideally, we'd use the nominal voltage from the data sheets for the TRC5000, which is 1.25 volts DC. But we can't do that. The board that runs the IC gate chip needs a minimum of 2 volts just to start. So that means our target is 2 volts. Why do we even care? We have 3.3 volts. Isn't that close enough? Most of our boards run on 3.3. Most of our components work with that voltage. So just give it 3. It'll be fine, right? Short answer, no. You have to look at the voltage as a range for the sensor's operating distance. The distance from the IR transmitter down to the gear and back to the sensor. We also have a very weak saturation voltage of 0.4 volts DC. Why this is important is because of how much light's going to be reflected. It'll be shown in the percentages later. I really don't go into the math. If you want to, you can. The whole idea of the encoder is that there's a highly reflective section and a highly absorptive or scattering section relative to each other. There must be a discernible pattern that can be seen so that the system can operate properly. If you look at the gear end on, you will notice there's a lot of curves and flat faces. Each one has some incident angle that can cause a reflection to the IR collector. And we know that the sensor has a low saturation level. This means that any stray or errant light can cause an inadvertent signal leading to deviation. Without going down the deep, dark math hole to determine reflectivity of gears that are coded and uncoded, these are some really simple numbers to help define what's happening. Metals generally have an 80 to 90% reflectivity rating when they have a good surface finish or polished surface finish. We can assume the Sharpie is going to dampen that by a factor of 20%. We can assume the gear has a higher reflective edge on the 90. So that means the recesses that would be painted with a Sharpie would be closer to 70% reflectivity. 70% at 3.3 volts is well over the 0.4 volt saturation, even accounting for losses. You're not losing enough light with a Sharpie through absorption or refraction to get the sensor to be calm. Needless to say, even if they're higher dampening methods from other easier to obtain coatings, there's always facets of the gear that can cause reflections and issues. Why the tirade? It's because we need to reduce the amount of total light IR bouncing off our encoder wheel to get a cleaner signal for the encoder to work. 
So all that said means we need to get two volts DC to the encoder board to reduce the total light. It also has the side benefit of reducing the working distance of the sensor as well. Now that we have a potential fix for the voltage problem, we need to figure out a way to reduce the number of facets to reduce errant reflections. This is where different coding methods come into play. And I'm not talking about stealth materials from the F-117. It's much easier to find. It's probably right next to you. It's PLA. Yes, it is that simple. We just coat the gear in PLA, making a composite surface that's continuous and consistent. This allows the IR emitter and sensor to have a clear zone of high reflection next to a low reflection zone. This is the same over the entire gear. And what comes up later is we actually want to polish the gear. The reason we want to polish the gear is so that we have a consistent surface for the light to reflect and refract off of. Anyway, here's my overly bad attempt at overfilling a gear with PLA and then reducing it back to what we need to work with. Initially, I use a small heat gun to layer on the PLA but you're going to need a few other things ju than just a heat gun. Like I said, you're going to need a heat source. I used a heat gun. You probably use a high-powered hair dryer. I doubt lighters and torches work as they have a high tendency to burn things. And PLA doesn't have a very high flame point. Pliers, a vice, a hemostat, something to hold the hot gear. There's some macho men out there that get calluses that probably can handle it, but we're talking about the average person. Find something to grab it while you're trying to lay the PLA into it. You need some sandpaper, files. You're going to at least want sandpaper in the 400 and the 2000 grit levels. You can put other grit levels in there. I prefer using files to take off bulk material to get down to the teeth, but you do not want to file the teeth. The file is to remove PLA and shape the PLA. You may be able to skip the filing if you're a little bit more careful with your PLA application. You're also going to need some type of smudging device, something to push the PLA into the gear. I used a scratch all's 90 degree edge, but you can use screwdrivers, X Acto knives, even pliers. Anything you can use that allows you to press the PLA and get a consistent, void free layer of PLA around the entire gear. And as you've been seeing, you're going to want some type of drill with a normal chuck, something that will be able to grab the end of the gear and spin it so that you can get a consistent rounded profile when working with the pla and shaping it there are three things you need to be aware of one outer face the bearing face that needs to be touching the encoder wall must not have any pla on it the teeth must be full and have no voids, occlusion, or defects. The sensing area and reflective area of the sensor is a little over two millimeters. So there's a lot of space on that gear tooth that needs to be filled in. The inner edge of the tooth profile needs to have a continuous ring around the gear to retain the composite surface together. This ensures the longevity of this mod. The only recommendations I have the, for the PLA is that it's black. Most black pigments are made from a lower reflective material than other colors, so other colors may not produce good results. I use Polymaker PLA, but I expect any PLA of any quality to work, including some of the worst brands that have stringing issues. We're not dependent on the extruder to make this look pretty. We're doing that by polishing it by hand. For my TRC 
T5000 boards. I ordered a batch of 12 off Amazon. They were listed as 5 volts. I grabbed a group of 4 and measured the resistance across VCC and ground to get an average resistance of 500 ohms. Using the average resistance and a voltage divider, you can plug in a guess um, at, I started at 250 because it was half of the sensor and was short on my target of two volts. I went down to 270. That seemed close enough because I have it on hand. Uh, I implanted that into my wiring loom and metered out at 1.99 volts at the voltage and ground on the sensor. I was using uh, the FISEC ERB board that runs by meter 3.3 and by documentation 3.3 volts to the encoder. Again, I was using a 270 ohm quarter watt resistor 5% tolerance and I soldered mine in but you should be able to do it with crimping make sure you do precautions insulate make sure it's not going to be in a bending zone so on and so forth you're messing with that should be enough to get you through this mod if you have any questions contact me in the links in the description and thank you for watching